yeah i'm back again um <laughs> you know i'm kind of on a roll here <laughs> or should i say the spirit is on a roll and there's um you know lord willing just using me <laughs> man shalom i'm coming to you in the name of yahweh bashim yashai wahara kakadash and double honors unto the apostles and the elders a great millstone who told me this truth you know, i'm just doing videos on my phone man and uh you know I want to get something to eat and uh, every time I want to get up and uh, you know get something to eat another topic comes man and I'll just sit you know sit back down again and uh, put on the camera <laughs> so um you know we're gonna go with the flow man you know because the spirit is like that you know and I'm I was just thinking man you know the righteousness of the flesh it's not what's gonna save us, man. You know, <laughs> you got a lot of guys uh, that um are concerned about the righteousness of the flesh, man. You know, yeah. You know, talking about, and you know, there's a balance to everything, man. You know, so Lord's will, I'll explain it, man. But um, let me see if I can put up a quick scripture as it go. You know, because you got a lot of guys talking about, you know, their bathing routine and uh, their, uh, you know, you can't sleep with Edomite women and how you're gonna get spiritual power if you sleep with Edomites and how you gonna do this if you don't do that and it's all carnal things man you know and it just baffles me because let's just you know say spiritual power together okay one two three spiritual power now let's break it down the two words spiritual first word second word power now let's go back to the first word spiritual so why the hell are you concerned about fleshly things pertaining to spiritual power? As if spiritual power is attained through fleshly righteousness. <laughs> because you, you bath a certain way or you burn incense a certain way or you put certain oils on your skin. Or you're selective with the women you sleep with. You know. It, it, that's somehow gonna, you know, give you brownie points up there in the heavens on a, on the some, you know, checkboard that the Lord's giving you stickers on, you know. Oh yeah, this brother, yeah, he's doing this in the flesh, so I'm gonna give him spiritual power. Like, it doesn't work like that, okay? You know, this is John chapter three and six. You know, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit, okay? You know, you want to talk about um, the flesh as if the flesh has to be in a perfect condition for you to achieve spiritual power. Let's have a, you know, let's take a look down a, you know, history lane and look at the apostles of old spoken of in the scriptures, you know, which by the way are back here again, but let's look at them in their past lives, yeah? Um, Paul, okay. You know, the scriptures say that, um, you know, his, his letters were heavy and weighty. And when the people saw him, they wouldn't think that a man of his countenance and stature could write so powerfully. Because you would expect a tall, strapped man. And most likely from that statement or from that, you know, account in the scriptures, Paul was probably not the tallest, you know, not the bulkiest. But, you know, the spirit was dealing with him. Why? Because... He, it wasn't about his physical uh, uh, countenance or his appearance. It was about the spirit that was within him. That which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Who else? Zacchaeus. Or Zacchaeus as the scripture says. He was a short man. And he had to get up into the tree. So that he could even see Yahweh Shai. Because the crowd was so huge and Zacchaeus was quite short so he couldn't see the Lord 
So uh, he had to climb up in the tree. Plus his job was quite despisable of the Jews. You know, didn't really like him because of his, his occupation. Yet, Yahawashai said, you know what? Today I'm going to eat dinner at your house, mate. <sighs> he had a spiritual turnaround and, you know, gave away his riches. And, you know, Yahawashai even said to him, today salvation has come to your house. Was that because of the this flesh or was that because of the spirit? That which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Uh, once again, the Apostle Paul, he had a, a thorn in the flesh. You know, his body wasn't up to standard. He prayed for the Lord to take it away, but it didn't go away. So, does it mean because he had a impaired body that the spiritual power couldn't work through him? Uh, that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Uh, who else is there? You know, Peter, he was known for being a charismatic guy and quite irate and hands-on, you know, no-nonsense type of person. You know, critics would look at him and say, he's got anger issues or, you know, this man doesn't know how to be calm or he's always too quick and stuff like that and he's always shouting and, you know, but he told a man to stand up and walk in the name of Yahweh Shai. So, uh, does that mean that the spiritual power was subject to his prior character? You know, which was transformed anyway? Or was it that the Holy Spirit was dealing with him, you know, so that he could do these things? That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Even Yahweh Shai himself, you know, the scriptures tell us he was a man of grief, acquainted with sorrows, you know. He took on our infirmities, you know, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, you know. He was a man that was on the earth because he still is and always will be. But whilst on the earth, 2,000 years ago, roughly, just over that, you know, he was a, a man of sorrows, you know, and grief. He took on our sicknesses and our infirmities, so, you know. We're looking at somebody in today's, you know, eyes of society. They would say he's depressed or, you know, this man, he's got a mental problem because he believes in, you know, things that uh, he, he changes, you know, the norm, you know. He does things outside of the box, you know. Maybe we should put him on some meds or something like that. That is how they would have looked at Yahweh the terminology that would have been used about Yahweh if he was still walking the earth today. You know, a sick man, you know. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And the examples go on and on and on and on and on. But let's use the final example. To all of you who are listening, you yourself. And to me who's speaking, I myself. We're probably the most fucked up individuals we know. Yeah? Think of your prior life before you came in the truth and all the shit that you were doing, all the shit that I was doing. Sometimes I sit down, I myself, and the tears can only roll down my face because it's like, damn. For me to be, have been doing all of that and the Lord still chose me, that's a blessing. Okay? But does it mean that what the spiritual power is not going to work through you or through me because of the flesh? You know, we all get sick. We all have infirmities. Some brothers, you know, more severe than others. We all have parts of our of our fleshly body that is fucked up. But the scripture says that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Paul says, or wretched man that I am. Okay. We acknowledge that in the flesh we are wretched. We acknowledge in the flesh that which I would do, I do not. And that which I wouldn't, I do. Roughly paraphrasing. So the flesh is fucked up. So what the fuck does the flesh have to do with the spirit? Concerned about all these, you know, 
silly little things as if that's going to give you brownie points with the Lord to give you spiritual but it just doesn't make any sense you know it doesn't make any sense at all man okay you know all right Yahweh Shai even speaks of uh, you know the Pharisees making laws that are grievous that's not even a part of the law to make themselves feel more righteous, which is just over righteous. And what did the scriptures say about all being over righteous? <laughs> you know? So when people are out here talking and, you know, doing things and extracurricular things that don't really matter, you know, and thinking that that's, you know, giving them a tick in their book up in the heavens, it doesn't make it, you, you're wasting it. First of all, you're adding to the scriptures. Because it doesn't say to do that. And number two, you're wasting your time because you're adding to the scriptures. And number three, it doesn't help your cause. You're just being over righteous. You can't sleep with Edomites. You're doing this, you gotta do that. Now, there's certain things we don't do in the flesh because it's a part of the law, so we keep it. Okay? You know? Well, certain things we do do to the flesh because it's a part of the law, so we keep it. But all this extra stuff that's not in the scriptures, and you making it up because you feel like you know, I don't know who the hell you think you are, but you feel like you're somebody. Everybody's wrong because you feel like you're somebody. Come on, man. Come on. Stop it, man. Read this one more time. John chapter three and six. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. The real question to yourself and to myself is this. Are we walking this truth or this path of the truth in the flesh? Or are we walking this path of the truth in the spirit? With that, I'm going to say shalom.